Hotel, run our Aunt Keparu, Earth to our another Aunt Keparu. I'm in a tap march right now, Pacock him. Uh, I want to talk about some of this metal nigga. We said hotel. What did we just say? How we see it written on the wall like that? We said hotel. Then I said rena. That's hotel right there, but you got to put the T and the P. The T is this half circle thing, and the P is a square. So that's hotel. Then I said ren ren ah ren is a name and the suffix ah would depend my name. So if I wanted to say ren ah, I would put an R, which would look like R N, and then I would put a man to let you know that ah that means me my name. So that's Hotel Ren Ah. And I said, what did I say after that? I said, my name is An Keparu. So I said, Hotel Ren Ah. An Excuse my glyphs if I don't keep saying that. An that's the An. But you gotta, when you're spelling it, you gotta write it out. So you gotta put the N. What's the An? N. And a K. I'm using this K because it's like the KH. That's Ankh. Keparu. Keparu is the beetle. Well, that's Kapara. In order to make a plural, you're going to put the three lines next to it. You go. One, two, three. Now it's Keparu. And since it's a name, you're going to put it in a chenou or a cartouche. Cartouche is French. Chenou is what it was called. So what I just said was Hotep. Er, or I said Hotep. Er, in, ren, ah. Ankh, Keparu. I said Hotep, my name is... Aunt Keparu. Aunt Keparu means life changing. Erta Aneta means given by God. Given by God is what Jonathan means. Jonathan, Yehonathan, Erta Aneta. So it's just the same thing. Jonathan's life changing. But if I was to put Erta Aneta, we'd go back to that R. The R, that's just like a mouth. It means utterance. It means mouth. And it could also be the letter R. Right now it's the letter R. R, Ta. So this top could just be an I if I didn't put this square in the hand. That square, I mean this triangle in this hand. This is an arm with a hand out, and the triangle makes it say ta. If it was just a without this triangle, it would say ah. So er ta, then we go on. You make the reed leaf, which is kind of weak reed leaf, and the end. Er ta on. Given by, and how you do God, you make a flagpole. That's how we used to signify God first in the world where you would attach a piece of cloth to a pole or to, you know, a long stick and plant it in the ground. That's the original flagpole that stood for God. Let me make a better one. It means netter. But you don't just draw the glyph. You put the T. And the R again, which is that same mouth from up here. You feel me? So that's say, or to on netter. It would just say given by God like a sentence if I didn't encase it in a shinu. Now you know it's a name, a divine name. You know what I'm saying? Or to on netter, but let's go. Now some of the things you would write around a name like this is... Nasubiti, which means Lord of the Two Lands. Nasu. I forgot, is that Upper Israel or Lower Egypt? I know it's N S Nasu, 
which is pronounced like N E S U Nesu. And then let's draw. If I can. It's supposed to look like a little snake. And it's pronounced. And it's like Biddy. Y'all can look that up for yourself. But that's Nasubidi, it means the Lord of the Two Lands. You feel me? And then they would put, maybe they'd take the Sabar. And the Sabar normally means sun. And then you put the determinative for Ra, which means God. That means he's the son of God, the Sara. He's feeling the Subidi, Erta Aneta An Keperu Sara. Uh, let me see what else. But now that's just names and cartouches. We did that before. Let's go on some new stuff. Earlier, the word Jed can be found in this pillar right here, which means stability. That's Jed, and it'll be written in transliteration as DD. The transcription will be D J E D, where the J is silent. But we also got, say if we want to say the J as in speaking to somebody. Now we got to talk about suffixes. For instance, let's just write them out how I remember. I'm going off the top. If you put a K at the end for a suffix, that means he. You know what I'm saying? Or his. Him, whatever. If you put a T at the end, it normally feminizes it. So that means her. Hers. Whatever. And then also, another feminine one is an S at the end. That means she or her. Excuse my writing. But what's another one at the end? If you put a, a F, F is masculine. Is that possessive? I'm going to do F. His. That's like his, too. That's like his. Just like the K. But the K is like. When someone is talking to you, me. So K is, let's take K out. That's like you. K is like you. So if I say, Madu K, that'd be like your words. Your, yeah. F is his, the suffixes. F is his, him. Man, it's hard to write on this chalkboard, excuse me. F is he, him. Regardless, it's more too. The stuff like ten. When you put the T in the end, it'll be there. And more, even more that I don't remember off the top. But you can look in the uh, suffixes. But let's just get over these base ones right here. The K, the T, the S, and the F is the ones you see a lot. And then the U as a suffix. You add that to anything to make it plural. You feel me? So let's work with that for a minute. And we're going to work with a word that we know, which is stability. If we was to say, in the glyphs, he's stable. We got dead. He is stable. So we want to put, the K is like you stable. The uh, F is he stable. So we want to put the F, we put the snake, a little snake. Oops, I shouldn't have put no Drop, yeah. Drop, <laughs> oh well, that means Jed, Jedith, <laughs> my right, that's a fool, J, E, D, Oh, Jedif. And what that mean? That mean he is stable. 